there we have that. So we could break that, that difference out in that format. Now what's the difference going to be? The difference we need to break out, it's going to put that here, equals the 200,000 minus the amount in the capital account, which is this 124,242. That's what we need in order, that's the debit we're going to need in order for this journal entry to be in balance. So and we're going to break it out at the 38. And again, that's a rounded number. So notice if I go to the home tab, numbers group and add decimals, it's actually 37.5. We can do that here, add decimals. And also note that if we add up the total equals the sum of these two, it should add up to one or home tab percent, a hundred percent. So we're going to break that out at 37.5 to M and 62.5 to L. So in D21, we can do that with a formula equals the 75.8 times the 37.5% means that we're gonna have to debit M's capital account, reducing it by 28,425 in F21 equals the 75.8 times the 62.5 and that gives us the 47.375. If we add those two up, of course, that adds up to the 75, uh, 8. So the ending capital count, if we want to think about what should the ending capital count be after this, this is where they started, 151.2, and we could see that over here, 151.2, and then it's going to be reduced by the 28.425 because this is the amount that was paid out in excess over the amount that's in the capital account for B. So we're going to do the same thing here. This equals this minus the 47,375, enter. And therefore, that, that's what the capital count should be at the end. I could sum that up for the total capital account. And there it is. So we're going to create the journal entry now. And once we do the journal entry, then we would expect that uh, these, this number is going to go down to zero. And this number should reflect the one uh, 22,775 and this number should be the uh, 217,225 and the two should add up to a total capital of 340. Let's see if that happens. So we're going to need a debit to the other two partners, the other two partners being M here. So I'm going to copy M's capital account. I'm going to paste that in I19, right click, paste it to 123. And then we're going to reduce this capital account with a debit. So this is a credit here represented by the brackets. We need to make it go down. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a debit. We're going to debit it by the 28,425, which should bring it down to the 122,775. Therefore, we're going to have the 28,425 here. We're going to do the same thing for L. So here's L. L has a credit balance. We need to make it go down. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a debit. Copy that, right click copy, gonna put our cursor in I20, right click and paste it one, two, three. We're gonna debit that account by the 47,375. 47,375, after we post it, L's capital account should then be the uh, 217,225. Let's see if we are in balance. If we add up our debits now, they add up to 200,000 equals our credits. If I add up all of them, it adds up to zero, meaning the debits minus the credits are equal because they add up to zero. So let's post this out and see if it does what we think it should do. What do we think it should do? Uh, it should bring M's capital account here, take B off the books and bring L's capital account here for a total capital count of 340. So also want to point out that the way I built that journal entry was best practices for me, the way that I can think through it. Notice that we could say that we should have these two debits on top and have it in a different order. In, in my opinion, in a more complex journal entry, any format that uh, you can look back on and say and figure out what happened more easily is more important than having the debits on top. But just keep that in mind if you're putting this into some other kind of format that uh, you could have people that are you know kind of picky and they want the debits on top. Okay, so let's post this out. We're going to be over here in O20. So we are in O20. We're going to select equals and we're going to point to that 124.2. That should bring this down to zero, put us out of balance, like so. We can see our accounting equation over here if we want to. And then we're going to go to the cash. Cash is going to be the second account. Cash is up here. And we're going to post it to 017 and see what happens. Equals the 200,000. 
what's going to happen? Well, cash is going to go down. That's a debit that we're doing the opposite thing to it. it goes down to 350. Then we're going to post the uh, M capital count. So here's M capital count. Here's where we're going to post it in 019 equals and let's point to that 28425. That's going to bring M's capital count down to 122775. Then we're going to post L's capital count here and we're going to post that to 021 equals and we're going to point to that 47375. That's going to bring the capital count for L down to 217225. The two capital counts now add up to 340. So that looks like it's doing what we expected to do here. We've got the 1227, we've got the 217225, and they add up to the 340. All right, so now we're gonna take one more scenario that will be very similar. And we're gonna say, well, what if we had the same information here, but now B sells the capital interest to the partnership for only 50,000. So now we're selling it for 50,000. Let's see what would happen if that was the case. So now we're gonna do the same thing where B is selling to M and L. Uh, it's just the amount that has now differed. So let's think about our journal entry first and then come back to the worksheet. So first question, is cash affected? And yeah, cash is affected because the partnership is once again paying B uh, to pay off uh, and buy the capital interest in this case. So cash is gonna go down, cash is a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. Uh, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna copy cash. I'm gonna put that in the second account. So I'm in I31, I32, I32. Right click, paste one, two, three. The cash that is gonna be paid out this time is only 50,000. So we're gonna put a negative for the credit, 50,000. And when we hit enter, we'll put the brackets and whatnot around it. So that's the um, amount of cash being paid. We're paying for uh, B's capital account. So now note that B's capital account is valued at more than the 50,000. So again, the question is, well, why, why, I mean, if the capital account represents the value of the company, and it's saying that she, uh, the capital account here has 124.2, why is it that uh, B would sell the capital account for only 50? And again, it's it's a negotiation between the partners and the, uh, the partner. So the partnership and the partner. And uh, it could be for various reasons. It could be that uh, you know they think that the, the partnership is overvalued in some areas. It could be that uh, you know B really needs to needs to leave at some point and is willing to accept less money because of the, the circumstances. So whatever that negotiation is, that's between the, the partner and the partnership. For us, we need to take this down to zero. There's 124.2, B is now gone. So how do we make that go down to zero? We do the opposite thing to it, so we're gonna debit it. That's a credit represented by the brackets, so we're gonna debit it. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna put that in I31, right click, paste it to one, two, three, and we're gonna put it in there for 124.2. Now we're gonna now we're out of balance, of course. We've got the debits are higher than the credits by 74,200. We're gonna need a credit of 74,200. What are we gonna credit? the other two capital accounts here for M and L. M and L are gonna actually increase their capital accounts by this amount uh, because they paid out less than the capital account balance for B. Therefore, they're gonna split the difference in accordance to their profit sharing. So once again, how are we gonna figure out what their profit sharing is? Well, we had a, a difference of three, two, five. So one way we can do that is we can say, well, let's make a new agreement where we're gonna have the three out of divided by instead of 10 now we got three and five or eight so three over eight and enter so that's that uh, 0.375 we could make that a percent home tab numbers percent and we could increase the decimals if we want to see more precision here like so and then b is gone of course and then we're going to go to n uh l we're gonna have the same thing we could say well let's make it uh five out of eight five out of uh three plus five so equals five over eight and that'll be the new percent we're going to put our cursor there home tab numbers and percent we can increase the decimals that should add up to one or 100 percent so let's see if that's the case equals the sum and double click the sum highlighting the 37.5625 adds up to one or of course 100 percent all right now uh we're gonna have to break out this difference 
between the price that was paid and the amount in the capital count. So in this case, the capital count had 124, 200 minus what was paid of 50. That's that difference, that's 74.2. That's the plug we need here, 74.2. And we're gonna break it out by 37.5 M and 62.5% 2L. So let's do that with our formulas. This equals the 74.2 times the 37.5% and that, could, that means that uh, we're gonna have 27, eight to 25 increasing the capital count here. So in this case, we started with 151.2 in the capital count plus the 27, 825. We're gonna increase M's capital count. So at the end of the day, M, this will go up from here to here. That's the idea. And then we'll do the same thing over here in L. We're gonna say this equals 74.2 times the 62.5 and enter. So then we're gonna say this equals what the beginning capital account was plus what it goes up by here. And there we have it. And then we're gonna sum that up for the total capital account. We'll sum the uh, 179.25 and the 310.975 total capital account here. So at the end of the day, what's gonna happen? M's capital account's gonna go up to 179.25, B's going to zero and L is going to go up to 310,975 for a total capital count balance of 490. That's the book value of the company, theoretically. All right, so let's post that over here. That means that M, we were left over here with the fact that we need some credits in order to balance this out. The credits are going to go to M's capital count. M has a credit balance. If we credit again, it's going to make it go up. So I'm going to copy this going to put our cursor in I33, right click, paste, one, two, three. We're going to credit the capital account balance for 27,825. So negative 27,825, enter. We're going to do the same thing for L. L is going to go up. We have a credit balance here. It's going to go up in the credit direction. We're going to copy that. Put our cursor in I34, right click, paste, one, two, three. And the amount will be for the 46,375, so negative 46,375. Now, before we post it, are we in balance? Well, if we highlight the credits, they add up to 124.2. That's equal to the debits. If we highlight the debits and the credits, they add up to zero because the debits minus the credits add up to zero. All right, let's post this out and see if it does what we want it to do. What do we want it to do again? We, we want this account to go to that. We want this to go to zero and we want this account to go to this which will give us a total capital of 490. Okay so we're gonna post out the B capital so here's B's capital we're gonna go to 034 to do so and select equals point to the 124.2 that will bring this amount down to zero. Then we're gonna go to the cash account so here's cash here's cash we're gonna put the entry here in 031 equals point to the 50 that's gonna bring cash down by 50 to 500,000. Then we're gonna point post the M capital. So here's M's capital. We are in 033. We're gonna select equals point to the 27, 8 to 25. This is a credit. This is a credit. It's gonna make the credit go up in the credit direction. We're gonna do the same thing for uh, L's capital. Here's L's capital. We're gonna post it in 035 equals, we're gonna to point to the 46,375. Credit will go up in the credit direction because we're doing the same thing to it. Putting us back in balance with the green zeros down here. And there we have the uh, 179,25, 179,25. The 310,975, 310,975. If we add these two up, adds up to the 490, which is the 490.